Hey guys, Shane with Optimal Dwelling Spaces here. I've got a short video today on shielding paint and uh, a couple of things before we start about shielding paint. We can actually use it for two different types of EMF radiation. It's primarily designed to block wireless uh, or microwave radio frequency radiation coming from a Wi-Fi router, a cell tower, a radio antenna, uh, that's the primary purpose of shielding paint and because it is conductive and creates a continuous shield that blocks that wireless signal it can also be used to capture if you will uh, ac electric fields which is another type of emf radiation typically comes from home wiring sometimes power lines um, and then also things that plug into home wiring so you actually get two birds for one stone with shielding paint. So shielding paint can be really useful, but it does come with a cost. The material itself is quite expensive. The labor time uh, requires additional coats of primer or color coat after as the paint, the shielding paint is black. So sometimes you need additional coats of your final color to not have any of that black coming through. So it's best to use it strategically in your home. And one of the best places to do that is in the bedroom. And we're in the bedroom of this home right now in the remodel phase. So the client has elected to primarily focus on this area and create a complete cage around the room so that when they're sleeping, there's really very little of this pulsed radiation coming into the home. Okay, so you're ready to start painting. What do you need to order? First of all, you're gonna to need to get the actual shielding paint. There's a few good brands out there. Uh, Safe Living Technologies is a provider of these various brands. This happens to be Y Shield. It's a, it's a great paint, um, very low VOC, designed to not irritate people that have uh, multiple chemical sensitivities along with EMF sensitivities. You're gonna to wanna to get this grounding additive. Uh, this will enhance the conductive um, performance of the paint so that it can effectively shield for AC electric fields. It's really convenient to just mix in with the paint. You don't have to deal with the conductive tape even if the AC electric field component isn't your primary goal. It's just a good idea to put this in. Sometimes when the paint goes up on the wall people report feeling uh, worse, feeling more sensitive. That's because of the conductive nature picking up the AC electric radiation from the wiring in the walls. So we want to have the ability down the road to ground it. Uh, and so you're going to need to do this, uh, add that as well. In addition, you'll need a grounding kit, which is a metal wall plate with a cable that connects to one outlet in the room to the yoke or strap of that outlet and creates a pathway to the grounding system of the home electrical. Beyond that, you're going to need a drill. You need to mix this paint quite well initially for a couple minutes at least and then periodically as you go through it has heavier um, components in it that will settle to the bottom and to get a good shield and a good effect uh, you need to mix it frequently and then beyond that um, half inch nap rollers or better are going to be best for this and beyond that you know you're going to have some basic painting supplies it is black it stains stuff so, you know, painter's tape, uh, tarps, plastic, and you are off and running. All right, so we've got our can of Y Shield paint opened up. And uh, like I said, it's going to need to be mixed for a few minutes, probably two to three um, at least. And if you haven't done this before, you want to turn your drill down quite a bit or the paint will eventually, once it uh, once it starts moving, it'll, it can lurch out and make a big mess. So don't do that. Turn it down and get to mixing. All right, so once you've done your initial mixing, you're gonna to wanna to take your grounding additive and add that and do a little bit more. It's 
quite thick and so just do your best to get it all out. Obviously working at this at room temperature is going to be better. And this is why we wear gloves. All right guys, so you'll know you're done mixing when you don't feel any sludge catching your uh, mixer at the bottom. And uh, this probably took actually closer to five minutes. I know I said three, two or three earlier, but um, once this can move around freely and you don't feel any sludge, give it another 30 to 60 seconds and then you are good to start rolling it on the walls. All right, so the most important aspect to get the paint right, um, besides the prep and mixing, is to ensure complete coverage in the room that you're in. And you're gonna generally wanna do two coats um, just to be on the safe side. You can do three or more if the source you're trying to block is very strong, but two is enough for most rooms. And you can see in this one, you know, basically anything that's white we are gonna to wanna to cover, and at the end of it, I'm not gonna to wanna to see any white. Um, that includes, you know, inside these closets, and as close up on these window sills as we can get. This is really an ideal time to apply the paint when we don't have moldings and finished uh, trims and finished electrical done. We don't have to tape things off. We can get really close um, and ensure a good coverage in the room. Now, one other thing to note, this um, this room sits on the ground level. So there's a virtually no need to do anything to the floor with our shielding um, because there's not a lot of room for RF to get in um, in the first place. So if you're on the second or third floor, then you're gonna wanna think about applying some type of shielding material, not necessarily paint to the floor or to the ceiling of the room below. And then finally, as far as boxes, electrical boxes, like a switch or a plug, we wanna keep the paint about an eighth to a quarter inch away from any of the metal surfaces from the electrical components. We don't wanna create multiple grounding points for this paint to touch the electrical. <clears throat> we just want the one reference point which we're gonna create with our grounding kit. All right, guys, we've got the shielding paint applied. It's just finishing up drying. A couple of other things I wanted to mention here. Uh, windows, obviously we can't paint a window black, but there are other forms of shielding materials, including window film 
and shielding fabric that can be made into curtains, which is the option the client has selected in this case. And we do need to address the windows as well, although newer windows that are more insulated will knock some of the RF down, uh, not enough. And it's a, obviously a big gap in the wall where RF can still come through. So you need to address that. The second piece here is that you want to apply the shielding material over a primed surface, never on bare sheetrock or bare subfloor wood. Uh, it's gonna soak up a lot more of the paint than necessary, and this paint is quite expensive. Primer is generally much cheaper, so always make sure you have a coat of primer and your texture down before you put shielding paint on. All right, so we're out in the main living area of the house and uh, you can see a black stripe along the walls. And this is one way to use shielding paint efficiently and economically to catch AC electric fields from the wiring runs in the walls and all the outlets and switches. And because the paint is conductive, we've put the grounding additive in it you can actually run a band of about nine to 12 inches where all the wiring runs are up to the switches and then on to where they go into the ceiling to feed the lights. And if you ground this with a grounding kit to the wall socket, then you are able to knock down a significant portion of the AC electric fields that commonly come into rooms about four to six feet with the standard jacketed Romex wiring.